G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward and a big welcome to all of my new subscribers. It's great to see you here. Today we've got a really happy pattern for you. Now this is one that I've been wanting to bring you for some time. It's one of my favourite ever little projects to make. And it's a gorgeous little teapot and you can use it as a, a little sewing caddy. You can pop all your little needles in the top, pins and needles at the top, put your little clippies on the side or you can just keep it as an ornament. They look fabulous in a china cabinet. So there is a free pattern in the description. All you need to do is click on the link, print out your pattern templates and let's get ready for afternoon tea. So today let me show you the pieces we're going to need to make our little teapot. Now we're going to be making it up in, I'm using a quilting cotton which I have interfaced with a fusible woven interfacing and I've chosen two colours in the prints. I've got one that's not so busy and one that's quite colourful. It's going to be put together very similar to this little one. So you've got your very busy prints either side. Centre panel is going to have a little flower applique. And we have felt, spout, top and handle. So choose some prints that will work for your little design and the colours that you like. And you can be quite traditional with this and you can find some beautiful um, shabby roses or you can go very, very modern. I'm staying somewhere in the middle here today and going for a bit of a, a funky sweet little print. So we have three of each of those prints cut and ready and then you'll need your little spout pieces and they are cut from interfaced felt. I'm going to be jointing this little spout onto my teapot today. I actually show you how to make your own joints in another video. I'm going to put that link up there for you um, so you can check that one out. It's very simple to do and it's very easy to joint a, this little spout onto the teapot. I will show you how to sew it on if you'd rather do that. Um, so you've got your two spout pieces, then you need your little lid pieces. Now you'll also see on your templates that you have, uh, you have to cut two pieces of fusible interfacing and they are for these pieces. So you can actually go ahead and fuse those into place. There's a little mark there, there's a reason for that. I'll, I'll show you that further along but you just press those right in the center because we want this outside rim to not be showing any interfacing. So that's your two lid pieces. You need a piece which is interfaced print and that's for your base of your teapot. You'll also need two interface pieces of felt and that's for your handle. And you'll need a base a hard base to go in at the bottom of our teapot so it sits nice and flat. Now I've just glued two pieces of matte board together. So just very firm cardboard. I've glued it together uh, yesterday with a PVA glue. So that's nicely dried and you can see it's very, very firm. And you're going to need, I'm going to be using a joint, as I said, from, from the little joints that I, might, that I make myself and that will be for putting the spout on. You'll need your little applique pieces, so for your little flower and your little leaves in colours that suit your project. You'll need two little buttons to attach our handle, something that matches. You'll also need a little button for the very top of your little teapot, something sweet like that. So I'm going to go with a little clear button and I'm going to add a little blue button in the middle just to centre that one nicely. And you'll need some chenille sticks. I don't know what they call them everywhere else. We call them chenille sticks. Some people call them pipe cleaners. You need the nice long ones and we need three of those. They're going to be going into our handle which will make it quite nice and poseable. You'll need, of course, some extra strong sewing thread and you'll need some, perhaps some embroidery thread to do your blanket applique. Also some clear craft glue and you also need one little piece for the top, for the very top of your little teapot as well. That's just interfaced felt as well. So those are all the bits you'll need. We're going to fill it up with polyester filling and I'm going to add a little bit of rice, but I'm going to pop that rice into a little pocket of uh, a little stocking pocket so that I can just drop that in. Um, so uh, if you don't have to add weight to this project, but I'm going to probably be using mine as a pin cushion in the top of the lid. So I like quite a heavy little uh, base. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start on our handle. 
So we'll move all these away and we're going to start with our handle. Now we don't turn our handle through. So what we're going to do is put them wrong sides together so that our right sides are on the outside. And we're going to take that one to the machine and you just want to sew a very close little seam, probably only about three millimeters, just starting just near the top here, because we still have to add our little chenille sticks. And you're just going to stitch all the way around, right away around that bottom end and right back up to the same sort of mark across the top there and use a, a matching thread for that one. Once you have your uh, little handle stitched, there we can go ahead and we're going to blanket stitch the entire outside edge of this little handle. Now the, the best part about sewing that little seam first is that you've got a perfect little guideline for your blanket stitch. So I'm using a pearl thread and I've just come in between those two layers, a little knot in the end of my thread there. And we're just going to sew just a standard blanket stitch. And as I said, we don't even have to worry about the the length of our stitches because that little guideline is there for us. Now if you haven't sewn a blanket stitch before I've got a video that shows you how to do that and I'm actually going to just pop the link up there for you if you want to have a look. But blanket stitch is simply going through both of the layers and coming out through the loop each time. So we go through both layers and now bring our needle out through that loop and that causes that little binding stitch that we're going to be able to sew right the way around there. As you can see, very easy to do with that little marker line. Now I've got one here that I've already done. So you can see that one's already and I've left my thread on at the end because I'm going to be wanting to close that little end up. So the next step is we're going to add our little chenille sticks so what we do is we've got them nicely together at one end, make sure they're nicely lined up and we want to find the center. So we're just going to find the center. I'm going to fold that one in half. And we're just going to give it a little bit of a twist. Just a little bit to hold it together, but we still want that end to be quite flat. And we're going to do the same all the way along just to keep those ends and we want to tuck those top ends in. Just a little bit of a twist. Makes it easier to pop in that handle. Keeping our little ends quite flat. And it's a simple matter of we're going to slide that one in the end. And pushing it in is very easy because of the way that chenille sticks are made. So once you push them one way, they don't want to come out the other way. So you can do it easily just by pushing it in with your hand. As I get closer to the end, I like to use my forceps. And we just get that right down there. Now we're going to push it to almost the end. We want to leave a space at the end and a space at the top because that's where our buttons are going to go and that's how we're going to be adding it to our little teapot. So I've got some room at this end and I've got some room at this end and because those chenille sticks they're almost like a little, a little velcro action they won't move in there so be careful when you're pushing them in that you don't push them too far because it's a little bit tricky unless you've got forceps to pull it out a little way again. So there we go, and you can see that, that that's going to give us a lovely moldable handle. So it'll hold, its, hold itself really well. So our next step is to go ahead and just continue on with our blanket stitch to finish off that little end. There is our little handle all finished, and we can just pop that one aside and we can work on our little spout. So we are turning the little spout through, so we do have right sides together. And we're going to sew on the machine just the top seam, which is from this little top edge. It's a four millimeter seam allowance. So that top seam, and then we're going to sew 
just the bottom seam here right to the edge we leave this end open and this end open so once I have those top and bottom seams sewn I've just pulled that one through the right side and I've rolled all my seams out and you can see there that what I'm going to do is I've just folded that top edge down to meet the lower edge with those seams matched up so just finger press those little seams open and I'm just going to sew that same little blanket stitch that we did here I'm just going to sew that little opening close just as it is here on this little one here so you, got, you get a nice little flattened spout there so it's just a few stitches just to tightly close that opening once my little spout end is closed I can go ahead and start filling that little spout with my polyester filling I'm going to use my forceps just makes the job easy just make sure that you get right up to that at the little end of that little spout fill it right out and you need it to be nice and firm because the firmer that it is the easier it is to joint it and the easier it is to sew it on if you're doing it that way so I'm just going to fill it right up right up to just about the edge here I have my little spout all filled there and you, I've gone ahead and used my felting needle and I've been able to pack those fibers down it stops all that that polyfill jumping out at me so wool felting needle is really handy so I pack that all down nice and flat and you see that's very firm that little spout and I've gone ahead and whether you're going to be sewing this one on or adding a joint as I am here you still follow this step and that is I've got a doubled thread of extra strong thread and I've just sewn a little running stitch around the whole outside edge make sure those stitches are, are quite small so we get a nice tight little gather and I've come out at the top there at the other side and I've got tail ends hanging so that we can tie that one up now if you're going to be sewing this one onto the little teapot what I would do is I would add a little cardboard disc in here but not cardboard that's very firm just something that's just got a little bit a, a little bit of hold just to keep that area flat and then you will just pull in those little drawstrings around it just as I'm going to do now with my joint so I'm using a joint so I'm going to add that little joint now the joint that I'm using is one that I've made and as I've said before you can have a look at that video it is a 35 millimeter joint 35 millimeter wooden disc and it, I'm using a one inch bolt just because we're drawing some gathers around that little bolt and I don't want my uh, my little bolt shaft to be too short when we go to add it to our teapot so for just to be sure I've got it on an inch bolt there so you see I've just popped my joint in and of course as I press that down it's going to compress this stuffing even more and we're going to get a lovely firm finish so all I need to do is tie in around that little edge there as tightly as I can keep centering your little joint as you do so just shift it and move it until that little that little shaft is coming out right in the center now it doesn't have to come right in to right tight around the bolt but get it as firm as you can pull it in in as much as you can now if you were doing it just to sew it on I would probably pull it in just a little way and knot it off and of course you don't have this in here you've just maybe got a little piece of cardboard and then you could just slip stitch that little uh, spout onto your teapot on the side panel when we get to that um, when we get to that point um, we don't we wouldn't be sewing the little spout on until your little teapot was all fully fully stuffed we joint it before it's filled but if you're sewing it on we put that on after the little teapot is stuffed so I'm going to tie this one off a couple of times to make sure it's very secure so there you can see that finished little joint and it's all tied off and it's ready to attach straight into our little teapot so we can put that one aside now ready to add a little bit later so now we can move forward and we can start work on the main body of our little teapot and we do our applique first so you have a fusible webbing or heat and bond on the back of your little felt flower pieces now this one is positioned seven centimeters 
from the very base to the high part of your little flower there in between two of those petals so you want to line up the center the very center because we're also going to be sewing a little stem line down there so make sure that's very central and that it is exactly seven centimeters to that little point press that one into place and I'll show you where we go from there so you can see there that I've pressed on my little flower and I've gone ahead and with my ruler and just a very fine pen I have marked in my stem right through the center there and continued up over the flower to make those little sections of the flower and then I've gone ahead and marked in from each inside edge and marked in those little diagonal marks now I'm going to take this one to my machine now and I'm going to machine stitch two times on every line every single line and I'm going to do a dark green on the stem and whichever color you is suit, suited to your little project but definitely make your your stitching darker and it'll really show up that little flower as we've got here you can see there and then we're going to come back and we're going to be sewing a blanket applique around the edge of the flower and its little leaves and there you can see my little flower I've done my stitching on the machine and I have gone ahead and added my little leaves and I've sewn a little blanket applique stitch around the edge of the flower and both of the leaves just to save a bit of time I've done this one ahead of time but I have just used for my stitching I often use my Gudeman top stitching extra strong thread for these sorts of tiny areas because the, the thread is really strong and it doesn't fatigue and it, and it keeps it all very neat and tidy and as you can see I've gone ahead and just added a little button in the center of that little flower so now we're ready to put together our, our actual body of our little teapot so on either side of this one we're going to have our prints and we rem remember we haven't got um, we haven't decided where our handle is going and so on so what we're going to do is we're going to sew with right sides together we're going to sew right the way up to the top and I do sew this seam two times for strength and then we'll have one that side and then we will add the second panel exactly the same on that side and we're going to do it in threes and then the next ones are the green with the color in the center so we're only doing three at a time we're not sewing them all together at once so we sew three together and three together and we want to make sure that when it's going around the teapot make sure that your colors are in the right formation so we're going to be going green and then a blueprint and then green again so I'm going to go ahead and sew those together and I'll show you that when they're all stitched up so now you can see there that I've got my two sides made so the three panels sewn together and this is our front side okay so our next step is that we have to flip this one over and we're going to be adding our handle here and our spout here so on your pattern templates you'll find that there's little marks that are for your handle and you just need to mark them in at the side that you're going to want to put your handle and then you're also going to want to mark in your little mark for your spout we've got to put those marks in now while we can while we can still get to it so now we can go ahead and we can sew together the side where we're putting our handle so where our handle is going in that's where we're going to stitch and we don't do that with the spout because 
we need to be able to get in there. We need to be able to open this up to be able to sew our little handle on before we close our final one. So this little one here where our handle will be, we're just going to stitch that one down the same as we just did the others. And you can see that once I had sewn these, I've just clipped those curves with my pinking shears and it just gives me a lovely rounded finish and I've rolled those seams out really well and I've just pressed open the very base of those, those little seams there. It just helps us when we sew the bottom in. So I'm just going to stitch that handle side in. So now I've got my all of my pieces joined together but I've got my one side open. This is my spout side and this is my handle side. And now I've gone ahead and just transferred those little marks that I put on the other side for the handles in there. I've just popped a pin through and transferred them to there and to there so I can see exactly where to sew my handle on. So I get my, my handle and I've got my button, one of my buttons, and I've just sewn a couple of stitches to secure that button to one of the ends. And this, this one is the top of the handle. So we're going to start with the top and we find our little mark which is just here and we're going to be sewing that handle straight onto that mark there. We're going to be sewing through the button and centered nicely over that little seam line and then that handle is going to be pulled over. So we want the handle to be pointing upwards. So I'm just going to sew that one exactly into place over that little mark. So there you can see the little handle is stitched at the top edge and it's facing upwards and it's nicely centered on that little seam line. And so next we can just fold this over because we've got that, um, that nice bendy chenille sticks in there. And I've sewn my button to the other side. So now it's on the top side and we're going to do exactly the same thing and find our little spot and we're going to sew right on that little spot. You can see that that will make our little handle. So one's on the underside and one's on the top side. So I'm just going to stitch that one securely into place. So now we have our handle attached on the top and the bottom. Now we can turn that one through and we can sew up our final edge to make our little pot shape. Matching up those seams again and we'll stitch up that final side. So now that all of my seams are sewn, my next step is to pin my base circle in. Now it's important when you're sewing these side seams that you keep them all nice and even. They're all a four millimetre seam allowance. But you might find because there's six of them, you may have some variance in how much you took on one and another. So if you go to pin your little base circle in and it's a little bit too big, you can just take that base circle out, just give it a little trim around the edge and you'll find that it will fit nicely. We all vary a little bit in our seam allowances. So once you've got that to exactly the right size, the pinning is just as you can see I've done it here. It's how I pin in all of my little pieces like my gussets and, and circles. And that is, I'll show you, it's a pin goes through both layers and we flip that one over. We take a little bit on the side and push that pin head all the way down. And this makes it much easier for sewing. You certainly can't pin this one in the regular way where you pin it flat. You'll end up just with a great big bird's nest. So pinning it this way makes it much easier. And then what I'm going to do, you can see I'm going through both layers, flipping it over, taking a little on the underside of that fabric, pushing that pin head all the way down. What that gives me then is that little 3D circle ready to go. Now what I will do is I will go ahead and overcast. So I'll just tacking stitch that in with an overcasting stitch, take all of my pins out and then I will sew that little seam, the actual little seam, I'll sew it with a stab back stitch using extra strong thread and 
I have a video that shows you how to sew the stab back stitch if you haven't done that one before I'm going to put that link up there for you to have a look at so we're just going to go ahead and sew that little circle in place so there we have that little base circle sewn in and you can see that I've kept that to the same four millimeter seam allowance now all we need to do is just turn that one through so now you can see I've turned that base through and I've gone around and made sure to roll that seam out especially on all of those seam junctions and so our next step make sure that your little handle is all straightened out we can do that finally at the end too we're going to add our little base disc in here so I've coated that with some glue I have let it sit there for about a minute just so that it gets a little bit tacky and then we're going to just pop that one in through that little opening and work it down to the base be careful not to get glue anywhere else I'm going to find that base down there and we just want to slip it into place and it's just a matter of fitting that circle in into the right spot and pressing it all down and then we're going to let that dry for, a, for a probably about 10 minutes so now my little disc is, is glued nicely into place and we can go ahead and add our little spout now I've transferred my marking from the inside to the outside so I know where my little spout goes and I've just used my awl and a knitting needle to just increase the size of that little hole there and we're just going to pop our little spout through and we want to make very sure that we've got all the fabric pushed up nice and flat against there, a bit tricky getting in there not as tricky as a bear and we want to make sure everything's pushed right down on that little shaft there nice and flat and then we add our disc we add our washer and our little nut and we can finger tighten that one up and then we just make sure that everything is sitting nice and straight now you want your seam to match so you want your center seam to match with the seam that you're adding that little spout to and you want to make sure that all of that fabric is pulled out nicely between those layers check that it's a nice clean join and then we can fold that back and then we can go ahead and tighten up our little joint just keep checking that that's not moving we can do that quite firm because we don't need that to be working as a movable joint we just we are using it for attaching so you can really clamp that one in such an easy way to add a little piece there we've got a lovely firm join that's never going to move even after compressing for some time and then we take our super glue and we're just going to drop a couple of drops in on that thread at the base just so that nut will never come away and we will let that just sit and dry for a couple of minutes so now I've got my little spout attached and that little bit of glue is dried and now we can start filling our little teapot now there's a few ways you can do this you can just fill it with your polyester filling but you need to pack it very firm and you don't have to add any weight I like a bit of weight to this 
So I'm going to add my rice just separately and I add my rice at the base because it fills that little base out very well too. You get a nice little firm, uh, it pushes everything out there. So I'm just using my dry rice here and just adding a little bit at a time just through that opening. And as I said, you can add as much as you, you feel you want. But as you're adding it, you want to be patting it down and settling that rice into place. Each time patting it down, you can use your knitting needle to get down there to really make sure it's packing into all of that, around that little outside edge there. If you're concerned about your rice getting, um, you know, absorbing moisture at all, these are little packets of silica gel that you get in all sorts of things that you buy. You find them in shoe boxes and so on. I always keep them and put them aside because I can drop that one in there in the middle of all of my rice and that will always keep the rice dry in there. You can alternatively, you can use a very fine aquarium uh, gravel will work or you can use plastic toy fill pellets so whatever it works for you um, mine I'm in a very dry climate so I won't have any issues with moisture um, but do what works for you for sure so I'm going to fill with rice up to about just the base of those leaves there and then I'm going to top up the rest of the teapot with my polyester filling but I'm really going to pack it in nice and firm so there you can see my little teapot all filled out taken on its lovely little shape there you find that your rice is quite moldable at the bottom there and now it's nicely filled out so our little handle is sitting up beautifully and of course it's got that uh, those chenille sticks in there so you can mold that to sit exactly right got a little spout sitting there and so now I've really packed that in you can see that's really really firm and it's got some nice weight to it so I've taken my felting needle and I've just tucked, tucked all of that in there. I've made a little bit of a divot in there with my filling because my little lid is going to go on top next. So our next step is to move on to our little lid. Now we've got here, we have our two circles put together. On one of those circles, I have cut directly in the middle just a two centimeter opening and it's right in the center so make sure you get it right in the center and that's for filling we're going to be filling the top of this little lid so we're going to take this one to the machine our little cut is made already in there we're not turning this piece through and we're going to sew right around the outside edge in a matching color right around that whole outside edge we don't leave any opening because this is our opening and we leave the seam allowance that we do that is around about six millimeters so we want to have about six millimeters showing because that's how we're going to pin it and sew it onto the top of our teapot so there i have my little top lid circle with my stitching around the outside and this is my little opening to be able to fill it and the opening goes at the top so what we're going to do now is we're just going to position our little teapot lid right in the center. You've got to make sure you've got everything lined up and so that it's the same distance each way. And what we're going to be doing is I'm going to add a little bit of glue on the underside and I'm going to be gluing that into place. And once I have it just settled and it's nice, I'm going to go around and pin that outside edge right on that seam line and I will actually pin a whole lot of pins right the way around. So there we have a little teapot lid pinned into place there right the way around. That's going to make our job much easier. Now the way that we sew this one on is with a blanket applique stitch but this time I'm going to use a curved needle and it makes the job so much easier. So I've got some pearl A thread and I've got my uh, knot in the end. And I always start somewhere at the back. And what I want to do is just 
dive in to my little teapot and come out somewhere on the edge just as a starting point pull that one through and that little knot will be hidden between those layers there so then it's just a simple matter of following this seam line that's the beauty of sewing at first so I pop my needle in and I'm just going to come out because I've got a curved needle it's taking some of that teapot and we're going to come out on the edge I do have a very long thread I don't like to run out <laughs> but of course you can join your threads as you go all right so blanket applique just as you would on a flat surface keeping our stitches probably about five millimeters apart and we're just going to make our way around that whole top edge coming out on the edge each time there pulling that one through and it really is quite simple with with your curved needle coming through that loop and that's going to pull that little lid down and we're going to end up with that little effect right the way around there and just use your stitching line as a guide as to how deep your stitches go so once I have my top lid stitched on there nicely you can go ahead and start adding some filling through that little opening and what we're trying to do is just tuck some filling in all around that outside and we're just giving that lid a little bit of substance there and especially if you're going to use this top section as a pin cushion which is probably what I will use mine for um, you need a fair bit of stuffing in there to to accommodate your pins so I'm just working around the outside edge of that little lid and making those that little edge nicely rounded and just with that little bit more filling it just adds that little bit more dimension to the little teapot and we're keeping that lovely rounded little look so just make your way round and filling that until we've got a nice little even look and then that little top opening there you can just throw a couple of overcasting stitches in that it won't be seen because we're covering it with another circle so I'm just going to keep filling so now that our little lid is all filled out nicely and we've closed that little opening underneath there we can just pin our final little top circle in place and then we do exactly what we did with the outside edge of this one only on a smaller scale and we just work that same blanket applique stitch all the way around before you get right to the end I like to add a little bit more stuffing so I haven't glued that one on I've just pinned it on so that I can leave a little space and tuck just a little bit more stuffing in there to get a little bit of height there so I'm just going to make my way around that one there is my little top circle sewn on I did add a little bit of stuffing as I went there now if you were going to be sewing your hand your spout on now is when you would do that because you've got everything put together and everything's going to be held nice and firm while you do that and you can just attach your little spout using just a little slip stitch around the edge a little invisible stitch to sew that one on but our final step with our little teapot is to add our little top bottom uh, top button um, and I'm using two here so I'm doubling up just to center my little flower the way that I'm going to do that is we do need a, a button that we can go through not a not a shank button so I'm actually going to go through my button and you can see I've made a little spot at the top there it tells me exactly where the center is and I'm going to dive in there and just go across just a little way and then I'm going to come up through my buttonholes and I will simply 
tie off a couple of knots tie that down nice and tight and then lose those thread ends back into the little teapot or snip them whatever suits you and there we have our finished little teapot such a lovely little project very happy little project um, you can make up make him up in so many different colors this one um, I was going to go ahead and make it up in the shabby colors with a nice cream felt so you can see so many different ways that you can make it and, and because it's a realistic size when you pop it in your china cabinet you really can't pick it from an actual teapot the form is so lovely so make it for a gift for somebody what a beautiful gift it would make and and if you are going to use it as a pin cushion which i definitely will because my poor little chihuahua head is looking a little sore it's a great little pin cushion. I like a pin cushion that's got a bit of weight and, and got a bit of substance to it. So you can see that just works so well. You could even put your little clippies around the handle and make it a little sewing caddy. I hope you've enjoyed making it with me. Well, thank you all for sewing with me today. I hope you've enjoyed making this little one with me. If you have, you could give me a thumbs up. That would be beaut. In the meantime, how about you tell me in the comments if you would like to see a little cup and saucer to go with it? Because I have designed one before and it's a fancy little teacup and a cute little saucer. You could keep some fabrics aside from your little teapot um, project and make a matching duo. So tell me if you'd like to see that. Make sure then that you subscribe so you don't miss that pattern coming up. Moving forward, you can follow me on Instagram and send me pictures of teapots now. I want to see teapots. In fact, I want to see everything that you're making. I love receiving pictures and I'm going to pin them, your lovely creations on a Pinterest board I've made, especially for you all to show off your lovely work. And um, I look forward to seeing them every day. Most of all, everybody, all of those good things, make sure that you pay them forward because we all can. And until next time, it's Huru from me.